Apparently for speech seven, I'm supposed to research a topic and then present it back to you. Well, I've been reading this book on the topic that I'm gonna talk about shortly. But as I was writing down all the things that I was learning in this book, I'm reading it to myself and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna put these people to sleep. So I'm not gonna use the notes. I'm just gonna put it in my own words. Let's get started. How many of you guys have encountered someone who just said the wrong thing at the wrong time, just didn't really understand people, and just always made dumb decisions in social settings? <laughs> Perfect, because what these people are missing is the topic that I actually wanna talk about tonight, and that's emotional intelligence. If you've never heard of emotional intelligence or EQ before, it is your ability to recognize and understand emotions in yourself and others, and your ability to use this awareness to manage your behavior and relationships. It's kind of a mouthful. It's that thing that some people have that really sets them apart from others because it helps them understand how to navigate through social complexities, how to navigate through conflict, how to navigate through times of hardship. So I wanna spend the next five to seven minutes talking you through that. I'm gonna walk through all the different components and then I'm gonna wrap this up by telling you all why you should care. That's my plan. So let's get into it. The first component of EQ is self-awareness. And if you think about this, that makes sense because it has to start with you. It has to start with your ability to understand your own emotions in a variety of different scenarios. Because if you can understand what's going on with you and understand what are the things that make you happy, what are the things that make you sad, what are the things that push your buttons? If you can understand that, that is a great start. That's self-awareness. That's where you get started when you're trying to boost your emotional intelligence. The second component of EQ is self-management. Because once you understand what's happening internally, the next step is you have to understand what to do next. A lot of people, you could think of it like this. We're all, we're all emotionally driven. That's just how the world works. That's how humans function. But if you think about when you're in a scenario, think of emotions like a, like a big fog that comes through and it blurs your vision. And you are, for some people who can't get past this, all they see is the emotion. What they really need to be doing is they need to look right through the fog so that they can understand the best course of action. That's what self-management is. The third component of emotional intelligence, well, let me back up real quick. So like I said, it all starts with the self. It starts with you. But once you're able to master some of those skills, then you move on to the social piece. And the next component of emotional intelligence is social awareness. So the first step is to understand what's happening with you. The next step is to understand what's happening with the person across from you. That's the next piece. And this is where, this is what differentiates good leaders from bad leaders because we live in a world where it's all about me, right? It's my wants, it's, what, it's my objective, it's my agenda. But the problem is you can't resolve conflict, you can't persuade people to do anything if it's all about your own objectives. It's actually about their objectives, it's about them. If you can't figure that out, then it, that's the tough part about being a leader, or that's the tough part about being a manager, right? So, so social awareness is a big, big key. If you're not good with social awareness, let me throw up a strategy. People love people watching. Am I right? We love people watching. And people love going to dinner by themselves. Am I right? So the next time you're working late and you want to go get some food, treat yourself out to a nice restaurant and just look around. Look around the room. Look for the people who are on that awkward first date. Look for people who are in a business meeting. Look at people who are catching up because they haven't seen each other in 10 years and just watch for the cues. Watch for the moment where the guy is not listening to the girl and she's getting pissed off or the friends are talking over each other. Because once you can see the cues, then you start to understand what's happening in the room. I'm gonna throw up another strategy actually. I thought this one was actually very interesting because when we're all in meetings, what do we do? We take notes because it helps us remember what we wanna say, it helps us remember what was said later. But the problem is if you take notes, you're not watching the room. And when you're not watching the room, you're missing that that person just cut that person off and that person has to give sign off on this project. People are pissed off. No one's really agreeing with each other. So if you're not watching the cues, you're not being socially aware. So that's the third component. I wanna to move to the final, and in my opinion, most important component of emotional intelligence, which is relationship management. 
Relationship management is what helps you build that strong bond with people, whether it's your friends, your colleagues, your instructors, your boss, there's whoever, right? Relationship management is a critical piece and, po and possibly the most important piece to emotional intelligence. So the, and the funny thing about re relationship management is when I first started working at the bank, that is what everybody said to me. Whenever I had a conflict with another employee or somebody was really aggravating me, they were really abrasive, my boss used to always say, Eugene, get back out there and build relationships. And I'm like, what, what, why, why is that the answer for everything? If we, were in, if we were in conflict, my boss would say, go take him out, him or her out to coffee, build a relationship with them, get them to see your perspective and you, for you to see their perspective, have that relationship with this because that's gonna have an impact as you guys continue to work together because you're not gonna stop working together unless one of you leaves the bank. So relationship management is a very, very big piece to emotional intelligence. It literally brings in all of the, all of the three of the skills that I just mentioned. You have to be self-aware, you have to know what's going on with you, you have to self-manage. Even if someone has upset you, you have to be able to manage through that and determine the best course of action. And you have to be socially aware because you have to understand what's happening on the other side of the table. So those are the four keys. Wish I could get through it some more, but I only have limited time. So let me wrap this up. <clears throat> why am I talking about this? Why, why do we care about this? Well, there's a lot of research that proves, actually, let me take a couple steps back. Everybody thinks that it's all about IQ. Right? the intelligence quotient, how smart you are. But research has shown that 90% of successful people have really high EQ, but not necessarily high IQ. And there's no actual correlation that proves high IQ leads to success. So if you look at the best leaders, it's almost, almost always unanimous that they have really high EQ. In this research study, it also said that if you compare, if you look at employees who have low EQ and are low performers, versus people who are high performers, they can actually catch up to the employees who are high performers by boosting their EQ. The other thing you should know is IQ is fixed. So your IQ at age 15 is the same IQ that you have at age 50, it never changes. But EQ is flexible. It can improve and improve and get better and get better. So that's why you should care. And if you're not sold yet, let me throw in one last stat. According to some more research, they found that people who have, who have scored high in EQ on average make $29,000 more in salary than people with low EQ. So there's a monetary value. In fact, they even drilled it down to every additional point in your EQ appraisal leads to, I think it's about $1,300 in an increased salary. So that's more money back in your pocket, that's better relationships, that's more <laughs> career growth for you as you become better managers, better leaders, whatever it may be, that's why you should care about EQ, that's why you should care to become emotionally intelligent. Thank you.